Hello everyone, my name is Naren and in this session, let's learn about collaborative editing. And in this video, we're going to talk about what are the different strategies, different algorithms and different components we needed to design uh, collaborative editing applications. Uh, like Google Docs, Etherpad and Mockingbird, which is actually um, in a wireframe collaborative editing application. So in simple words, if I want to explain what is collaborative editing, it is um, it is like letting multiple users work on the same copy of the document. The document could be either text or you know uh, rich text, or it could be even painting or you know wireframes. Document can be anything. We just need to let multiple users collaborate and work on the same copy of that particular document that is called as collaborative i know editing like you guys have used google docs right you, you guys know that but whereas ms uh, you know word or ms document right that is not a collaborative editing um document at all because only one user can open that particular document and edit at a given point of time so you must be thinking what could be a difficulty in implementing collaborative document? So there is one document, there are a couple of users who is working on it. All we need to do is uh, you know, share the diff of what, what all the different people are editing in their uh, local copies or local clients, right? We just need to keep share between um, different users who are working on the same copy. But it is not as simple as that because a same user can be deleting a particular you know, line, adding line in between, adding words in between, you know, changing the, you know, font of the word or it could be anything, right? This is so complex task, it can't be easily implemented in simple algorithms. So I'm going to talk about different strategies, how we can solve these kind of problems. And um, you guys can get to decide which uh, implementation or which kind of algorithms holds good for your use case when you're implementing such a feature in your applications. So these, these problems will become um, complex because of two main reasons. One is concurrency, because more people are working on the same document that is called as concurrency. And the second thing is, since these um, guys who are working on the same copy of the file are in different places, they are connected through internet. That means that there is a latency between each and every you know, client or users. Uh, when they are sharing the diff. So there is latency, there is concurrency, and these two factors causes, uh, pose a huge problem in implementing the collaborative editing. As an old school approach, whenever we are accessing shared resource, the first thing which comes to our mind is lock. Can we use lock to solve this particular problem? Think about it. It's not possible at all. Now, I have seen hundreds of people accessing the same Google Doc at my office, uh, even when we are discussing, you know, planning trip or doing some kind of collaborative editing with friends also, we have like 10, 15 users who are editing the same document. So even if we want to give a turn-based editing right to each and every user, it's not going to be possible. It's not going to be that easy using lock at all. So this solution is ruled out at very first step itself. This can never be a solution at all. So what are the other solutions which is possible? So as a design need, what we need is we need a lock-free architecture. So having said that, using locks is called as pessimistic concurrency control that we don't want to have. So the next thing is possible is optimistic concurrency control. What that means is we optimistically think that nothing is going to go wrong, even though we give access to the uh, to all of the users who are editing the same document. How do we solve is mostly by taking the versions of each and every um, step of the state of the particular document or you know some some logic which works out. So we want to have an optimistic concurrency control. Now let's take an example. There is user A, there is user B, and both are working on the same document from their browser. So he will be looking at uh, the copy of the same document on his browser, and the user B is also looking at the same document on his browser. Both are editing the document. Now how do we sync the information which both are working on, and we have to make what this guy or user B is typing on the screen of user A, 
and what user A is typing on the screen of user B also, right? So how do we do that? We need to definitely sync the information between these two users. There are multiple strategies to do it. One is character by character or event based, you know, syncing. Or what you can do is line by line syncing. Or we can do is diff syncing. Diff is something like uh, when you do git diff, right? It shows you all the difference um, or the, all the edits you had made to that particular file. Just take that copy of the git diff and then keep sending back and forth so that we can keep on patching on either side of the, the you know, browser or the local copies. And all these three strategies works, but we have to think about the bandwidth usage, latency and etc. So the first strategy, what I said was, um, you know, even passing or character by character, you know, syncing. So this works in a very simple manner. As soon as a user types or deletes or any key events happens on a particular document on the local copy or the client or the browser of any user, we need to keep sending that information, not just the, you know, addition or deletion or updation, even the font changes and everything should be treated as an event and any changes happen to that document should be keep on translate to all the other guys who are also editing the same document. That is sending bits and pieces of information instantaneously, like every now and then. That is easy or we can take line diff or the whole line, any changes happens to the whole line. We keep on sending the uh, you know updates uh, you know, periodically or as and when there is more changes happen to that particular line altogether. But the problem is, what if the other user also have edited a lot of the characters in the same line? So it's, it's a little clumsy to resolve the conflicts and all, but it can be solvable using that strategy also. And the other way, as I said, is git diff. Like you get the diff uh, periodically from a user and send the whole diff, you know, text from user A to user B and do the same thing on the other side. Like user B is file, get the diff, send the diff back to user A and then patch it on both the sides. So both users have the same document state on either side and that is called as differential sync. Now I'm gonna explain in depth how even passing also called as operational transformation, better I better write that because it's very important. It is called as OT or operational transformation and differential sync. Both are really good algorithms. Google Docs is using operational transformation or even passing. It's just because um, if you guys know that there was one product which was released very early uh, time of Google was Google Wave, um, which was um, giving the you know uh, collaborative editing like feature. That was the first guy the first product which was launched by Google, which gave the ability ability for the users to you know simultaneously update the same document. Um, actually, Google Docs is kind of spin off from the Google you know Wave, uh, where it took a lot of the infrastructure and the algorithms which was developed for the Google you know Wave and which was used in the Google Docs also. So, operational transformation was first implemented for Google Wave only. Um, so, as of now, Google Docs is also using operational transformation uh, for syncing the information between multiple clients and um, keep converging the document to the one single. So now let's learn about operational transformation. I'm going to read out the definition as it is written in the Wikipedia, which makes more sense. Operational transformation at its core is an optimistic concurrency control mechanism. It allows two editors to modify the same section of the document at the same time without conflict. Or rather, it provides a mechanism for sanely resolving those conflicts so that neither user intervention nor locking become necessary. And also in operational transformation, every changes or every modification to the documentation is represented as an event. And each event will be transferred back and forth from the server to the client and from the server to the other clients. Uh, you know, back and forth every time instantaneously when the changes happens to the document. Operations are, for example, insert, delete, update, retain. And these are the basic operations which we think of in a text editing, right? But there can be numerous operations in the Google Docs. Say, for example, change in the font, you know, change in the color, change in the background color, or, you know, change in the font size or the style of the font and etc. 
So there can be you know hundreds of operations which we can deduce once we go into implementing. For now, let's take on the example of these four you know basic operations. Now I'm going to give you an example to explain it further to um, explain all the different problems and how we are going to solve. So let's take an example, okay? So, so these are the operations which we are supporting. Insert operation, whenever we are sending that information from one guy to other guy, we will send something similar. The message will, will look like something similar, insert. And we have to mention what character and where. Say for example, insert character A at position one. Delete character T at position 10. Update character from say x to y at position 20, something like this. Each and every operation should actually carry the information about what character is modified and what position. So having this kind of design, let's take an example and see what happens when um, both guys are started to update the same document. Consider we have a document which started with uh, you know sample information like or this document has uh, text AT in it, A at position zero, T at position one. So this is the document. Okay, this is the actual document which we are starting to edit. So there is there are two guys, guy one, guy number two. And they both are, have opened the Google Docs on their browsers. Now both will actually see AT, AT, right? So that is clear. So now consider this guy and this guy start to edit this, this particular text at the same time. Now let's see what happens. So this guy's intention is to kind of delete T. So what operation he performs is delete T at position one. That is one, right? So we index from zero, one. So he deletes T from position one. So that's the operation he performs. Now the state of this text or the document will be A, right? So in the same time, in the parallel universe or the other side uh, of the internet, so this guy, the guy number two, what he is trying to do is insert operation instead. Insert H to position zero. He is trying to create hat word using AT. So what he's trying to do is insert H at position zero. Now this document state will become H A T, right? Both are correct. Now it's not the end of the story because whatever operation we perform on this side should be transferred to that guy. And whatever operation which was perform performed on this side should also be transferred back to the other guys, right? Since only two guys are operating on this document, we just need to transfer it back and forth. So now this operation, let's send it to guy number two. Okay, and this operation will send it here. So now what happens? Now, as soon as we receive this information, insert H at position zero. Now let's execute blindly. What happens? We insert H at zero position. That is, so since this is, is the zero position, if we insert it, it will slide back. So it will become H A. Right? So now this is the latest state of the document. And now since this information was sent to guy number two, delete T at position one. But if you actually see at position one, there is no T. Even if we go ahead and delete something at position one, we end up having H and T only. Now there is a, first of all, we had a mismatch because we never had T at position one in this resulting document. Even though if you override and delete one at position um, in, the, in the text, we delete A and we only retain HT. We can't just find T instead of going to position, if we just search T and delete, it will not be a correct procedure because there can be numerous T in, in the, um, text which is in the document. In this example, there's only one occurrence, but actually there can be multiple occurrence. So we can't just search by the character and delete. Instead, we have to 
depend on the position. So we de deleted A, so we end up having HD. So if you see here, both guys now doesn't have the same copy of the document because the intention for of collaborative editing is to have a you know convergent document or the document should always converge into one single state. If you have multiple state, if if there are like um, n number of guys who are editing the file, we'll have n n, n number of different uh, copies or different versions of the file created. We don't want that to happen. We always want one copy of the file to be there. And that is the source of truth. And that should be always consistent for all the users, right? How do we make it consistent? Um, if we just send the operation back and forth, uh, if we just broadcast the operation to all the other guys who are editing, it won't work because we just saw here, right? Because we have the, our document state is not same on both the side. Here we have HA and we, here we have HT. So what operation transformation um, I just explained was to keep on sending the uh, you know um, granular updates back and forth. But we did that, but it's not happening. So here is actually the core part of operational transformation comes into the picture. The formula looks something like this. Here is a simple explanation in um, you know plain English. Before that, uh, before doing that, uh, I'll just tell you the core objective of this particular formula. We just need to uh, somehow modify these operation, which is somehow relevant to this guy. And whenever the operations of uh, you know, guy number two sends to the other guys, we have to modify this particular operation, which should be suitable um, to be applied to other guys uh, document state, because we can't just blindly apply the um, you know operations uh, of us. one person, uh, to the document of the other person. So what we have to do is we have to do kind of transformation of the operations sent by the users to the different users. The algorithm name, what I said was operational transformation. What that means is we have an operation, we have to do a transformation of this operation, which holds good for the other user who is concurrently editing the document or who is collaborating with us. So let's go back and look at the formula once again. So this formula means that the transformation function takes two operation at any given, any given point of the time. That is operation A, which we have done and the operation which we have received. And then we have to do transformation. Uh, before explaining that, I, I just forgot to explain, uh, tell you one more thing. So every time we don't actually uh, send the you know, information directly from user A to user B and user B to user A or one to two and two to one, or if you have more number of users, like one, two, and there are a couple more users, we're not going to broadcast these operations directly to uh, more number of users. And we don't receive the operation from all of the users. So instead, we always have one authoritative server, or you can call it as a server or session server, whatever you name it. So consider let's make this itself as a server, okay? So when these two guys open the document, he received this state from the server with a copy of the document which is there in the server. And any operations which we perform, we always send it to the server, and the server in turn, in turn sends that, those operations to all of the other you know, users who are collaborating for the same document. So basically, whenever we are exchanging some information, um, it is actually, in this example, is not the guy number two. We are kind of talking to the server. I just told you that we are just directly receiving from the you know, guy number two to one and one to two. Actually, it's happening like for this guy, he is receiving the information from the server. And for this guy, he is receiving the information from the server. So think it that way. So in case of uh, this formula, so this transform um, uh, function takes two operation, operation A and operation B. Think operation A as the local operation which we apply and B as the operation which we receive from the server. And this transform function produces a pair of operation that is A dash and B dash. And these operations can be applied to the other guys or the counterparts um, end document state to produce the exact same state when these operations are applied on both the side. So to just to uh, show it graphically, and this is how it looks. This is called as uh, you know diamond graph or a representation of the operational transformation where it shows 
there is um, so usually it is represented as the the blue line is the client side operation and the gray line is the operation which we receive from the server. So A is the client's operation and B is the um, the server's operation. So so from from a single state that is the tip of the diamond, uh, we actually apply operation A and we diverge on the you know left side. And when we applied um, on the server side, it diverge to the right side, that's the gray line, okay? So now the document is not in the same uh, state, it actually diverged. And then we have to apply operation A, uh, which was applied on the client side, on the other side, and we have to apply operation B, which was applied on the server on the client side. So that is, so now I will, I will just write it graphically to make you guys understand this formula, okay? So Say we start with um, um, a state of the document that is 80, right? So we started from a state 80. So this is considered this is a starting point. And then we applied operation A, right? Operation A, and then we arrived at state A. Uh, I mean, the document state A, actually we applied operation A, and then we got output A. And then what we did is on the server side also parallelly, there was one more operation um, which was applied. What happened there was we applied operation B. So I'll call operation this as operation B and uh, this as operation A, right? So on this side, when we applied operation B, we arrived at a state hat. So here we have, we were at state hat. So now what we did, in this case was we sent this operation B on this side and we sent operation A to the other side and then we arrived it to a different state. So what we did was, okay, we sent this operation on this side. So we got operation B over here and we applied this operation on this and we arrived at what? HA, right? So we arrived at HA. And when we send this inform this operation over here, we applied A and we arrive at a different value HD. So this is not uh, correct because we are supposed to arrive at the same state. We are not arriving it. So this is this is not stable. So instead of sending operation A that uh, operation A itself to the other side, what this operation transformation says is we have to send A dash. And the same holds good for the other side also. Instead of sending operation B directly to the other side, we have to send instead B dash. Okay, how do we get A dash and B dash is what the formula says. So we have to pass these two operations to transform function. That is, say I write it as x form. When I pass A comma B both operation, it automatically, not automatically, so we have to actually implement operation transformation algorithm. So it gives out A dash and B dash so that these operations on applying on the either side, we arrive at the same state. That is, we arrive at HA. On this, what we're supposed to do is, so when we send um, X form, or the transform of this operation, that is delete operation and then insert operation, we should have got, instead of deleting t comma one, we should actually get delete, delete t at what position? t comma two. Now what transformation happened was, the actual operation which we had on this side was delete t comma one, right? This transform function understood based on the intent and the you know, context, it got to know that the document was modified and it's, we're not supposed to delete one, we have to delete position two and that's his T. And also it should give out one more operation that is insert of the insert H at zero position instead of um, you know, inserting at zero. So it understands that inserting H at zero position itself will retain the integrity of the document. So it gives out the same operation. So 
by passing these operations on the either side, we actually arrive at the same state that is HA. Okay, so here, just to rewrite this example, so if we have passed these two operations, then transferred it or applied it here, we have got delete D to right and H uh, insert H at zero position. So we just need to change one to one when you, when you transform it will, it will become D T zero. So we could have actually got H um, A itself. So that's when we arrive both side we arrive at the same state of the document. Uh, I'm not sure I have explained it uh, well so that you guys can understand it or not. Just uh, go and read about operational transformation. And there is tons of uh, features in operation transform as well, like supporting redo, undo, and everything. So this is a very simple form of you know representing the diamond diagram. Actually, this grows uh, to even bigger. Okay, so far we learned operational transformation. Now let's learn about differential synchronization. It's very simple. It's like I, as I explained earlier, it's more like um, taking git diff from the modification you have made to that particular file and taking the different applying the patch on the server or on the other clients. Say in the setup, I have server and I have client. I think these two uh, components are in client side and these two components are in server side. Similarly, more number of clients are connected to the same server. So if three guys are working on the same copy, obviously we need to connect to Google Docs uh, server, right? So there's one guy connected to the server there's one more guy, so I just mentioned for the sake of the presentation. This guy is also connected to the server, and this guy is also connected to the server. So totally three guys are connected. And I'm going to take only one client in uh, this server to show you how the uh, differential synchronization works. So whenever we open a particular Google Doc, we always start with the initial state. So in this case, this is called as client copy, and this is client. So on the client side itself, we need to maintain two copy of the same document. On the server side as well, we need to maintain two copy. This is the actual copy. And for the very first time, we actually have a duplicate copy of the same step. So when we start, all these four copies are in the same state. So obviously, so this is the internet connected via internet, right? So they are like, in a different places altogether. So now, when say for example this client edits something on in here, okay. So there is some modification. A user has modified the client copy. This is where the actual editing and everything happens. Consider this as the browser and this is in memory of the browser itself. Okay. So user has edited something over here. Now we need to get the diff and send it to the server to keep the document always in the converged state. So now what we need to do is on the very first step, we need to check the data in the memory with the data which is there in the latest um, copy which we edited and get the diff. So we got the diff. Now what do we do with the diff is we need to send this diff as simple as that. Okay, we have sent that. As soon as we sent it, we need to before user edits, we need to replicate the copy, whatever we had, to the client copy. So now these two are in the same state. Now the diff is sent to the server. Now what happens here is, when the diff is sent to the server side, obviously here also we have the server actual copy and the server copy, one more copy, for some reason, I'll tell you why. Um, so first, what we need to do is, we need to check the diff with whatever diff we send. Consider it, we will name it as patch, okay? So we, are, we have sent this patch over here and we need to check the diff again with the server copy. And then we have to get the diff because um, this copy would have been edited by some of the clients, right? So it, will never be same as this, or it might be, but most cases, if more clients are connected to the server, the, the actual copy here 
would have been diverged. So what we need to do is on the patch, we need to check with this, you know, server copy and then get the dev and then apply to the server copy. And also we have to do the same thing on the server also, the, the data which we have for the doc and the server also. We need to get the diff and apply it, okay? Now we have successfully sent the updates which we made on this client to the server. So once this replication happens on the server side, what happens is server should broadcast it back to all of the clients again. How, it, how does it do it? It again does it in the same way how we, how we did it on this side. It basically takes um, diff from these two, okay? Checks for diff and creates a patch out of it and then takes a screenshot uh, or takes a copy of that state before some other client comes and edit that um, arbitrarily. So we have to keep on taking a um, copy of the server also because uh, because of the concurrency, it's it's that simple. So whenever we are taking a copy or we have to have a uh, locking mechanism or um, some mutex or something so that um, at any given point of the time while we are taking a copy of the server uh, data, it shouldn't be edited by someone else. So it's just that we have to maintain that atomicity. And then this patch should be sent back to the client and all the other clients. Okay, so in this case, this diff, there is no need to send it back to this client. Even if you send it, what happens is the same strategy applies here also. We'll check it here. Essentially, there will be no diff because we actually created this patch out of the same copy. So the same diff is coming back to us. So essentially, both are in the same state. So we have nothing to patch. So we'll not have, but for the sake of process, I'm just going to mention, calculate the diff and apply it. If this patch, was because of some other client, maybe this guy sent some updates, then we were, have, we were supposed to up, apply it to the client copy and also to the working copy of the client also. Here also you get the diff and apply it over here. On a high level, it is very simple algorithm. It's just that taking a diff, applying the patch, and then keep the state on the server side and the server acts as a source of truth. If this guy is went offline for some reason um, and he has diverged too much, and all the other clients have diverged in a different way, it's actually a very big conflict. Uh, in that case, we have to take a decision whether we have to um, keep this change, diverge it to a different version of a copy because we can't successfully merge it, or just discard all the, you know, unwanted, uh, all the copy, um, asking for the user, okay, there is uh, some, you know, uh, merge conflicts or something. I mean, I mean, we can handle it in a different strategies. Um, that is up to our use cases. So this is the differential synchronization. Be it OT or be it differential synchronization, there is one important thing which we need to follow always. Say the, this is a simple representation where the server and client to um, one client here and one client here, there is client one, client two. So I, you select whichever algorithm you want, but one thing is very important that you always need to make sure that there is a state which is maintained on, in the server because these clients can go offline anytime, this client can diverge anytime or they can do anything. So we need to always make sure we are actually maintaining the state of the document and all the histories or the updates are kind of saved in some place, be it um, in the time series DB or be it in your Cassandra or be it in RDBMS, it's up to you guys. Uh, look, if you look at the scale, there are too many updates, right? So I, uh, you know, I recommend to go for NoSQL or Time Series DB so that you also get a timeline of um, operations. And also you can track what user has modified what particular part of the document. So it looks something like this. So operation kind of... <coughs> <coughs> kind of stack of operations um, which we have on the server side, uh, which also tells you what time, which user um, set, did what modification to the document. Uh, that way we can also recreate at any point of the time. I mean, that is not necessary. That is kind of disaster recovery or kind of all this management, but 
Anyway, we have the complete record of how the document evolved into uh, the current state. Um, yes, and also one more thing is uh, we have to always uh, look for acknowledgement. This client will just keep on sending the diff or events in case of OT or anything, right? So they will be keep on sending the updates and they will be keep on receiving the updates. So whenever the client sends an update to the server, before uh, they uh, send the next option, they should definitely wait for the acknowledgement back from the server. Um, that way, that way the clients can make sure that the operation, the previous operation is properly applied on the server side or not. Because if the first operation failed, and if the client is already sending the second operation, uh, because of this operation got failed, um, it is not correct to apply this operation because the very before the operation before that has failed. Uh, it would definitely cause um, you know conflict, and um, you know conflict resolution will be uh, difficult, or it will just cause unnecessary complication. So always, uh, while sending the operations, uh, we had to wait for uh, the successful previous acknowledgement, and then only make sure that you keep on sending uh, the operations.